Yeah. This is where I'm weak. Starting off the news this week, some worms. So, um, what's happened with worms? Right, well, a study was published this week in the journal PLOS One that looked into the distribution of acariasis, trichariasis, and hookworm infections in Ogun State in southwestern Nigeria. It aimed to assess the prevalence of these infections and successfully did so. This information will hopefully be used by health authorities in providing appropriate control strategies. There's one bit of worm news, what else can we find? Uh, another study published in the journal Scientific Reports, which is like an offshoot of Nature, I think, but also I don't really know. Anyway, that looked at how infection by nematodes in long-lived mammals varies with different aspects of the host, like age and sex. The paper said that the results have given important insight into host parasite dynamics in the situation and been important for broadening our knowledge of parasite ecology, which will be able to be used in wildlife medicine and management. And now over to Ben with worms. I'm not sure if it'll be about worms, it doesn't matter. Thanks, Doug. In the less worm related science news of this last week is an interesting study on the neuroanatomy of the Spinosaur irritator. Researchers generated digital models of neuroanatomical cavities within the brain case, and found certain features that indicate it was capable of fast, well-controlled pitch-down head movements, which is interpreted as being consistent with the fast downward snatching actions required for acts of predation such as in piscivory, indicating the irritator was potentially well adapted for hunting fish. Also in the dinosaur news is a great study on one of my personal favourite fossils of all time, the Borealopelta holotype. This paper has examined preserved stomach contents found within the specimen, providing the most detailed direct evidence of diet in a herbivorous dinosaur so far known to science. Paleontologists found that this nodosaur preferred to eat a certain kind of fern type over other kinds of ferns and plants, as well as discovering that charcoal had been ingested, hinting that the dinosaur was feeding in a recently burned conifer forest where new ferns were growing. It's a really fascinating study with all kinds of paleoecological implications. Even more exciting dinosaur news next, as this week also saw the publication of a massive study on T. rex growth. Paleontologist Thomas Carr examined 44 specimens of the theropod in order to produce a single hypothesis of growth for Tyrannosaurus, as previously the data from all these fossils haven't been able to give a complete picture of exactly how it grew. Some interesting things were found, including that between 13 and 15 years old, the transition from shallow to deep skull shape occurred, and between 15 and 18 years is when T-Rex exceeded the size of its close relatives. Now I know what you may be wondering, I wondered the same thing. What does the study say about Nanotyrannus? Well, not much at all really. It's considered invalid and specimens thought by some people to be examples of Nanotyrannus are included as T-Rex juveniles. Finally, for this action-packed week of paleontology is the description of three new species and two new genera of Chasmosaurian ceratopsians. These taxa all date to between 75 and 73.4 million years ago and were found in New Mexico. One of the dinosaurs is simply assigned to a new, unnamed species of Pentaceratops, while the other two are named Navajoceratops solivani and Terminocavus silei. The three new taxa don't overlap in time and all show a stepwise change in morphology, indicating that they may be showing an example of evolution by anagenesis, where one species turns into another without any branching. The taxa are intermediate in anatomy and stratigraphy between the older Pentaceratops and younger Anchiceratops, potentially meaning that these ceratopsians evolved into each other. So a lot of really great paleontology news this week. Back to Doug in the studio. Hey, where'd the sleeping bag go? What? Oh, that, that was a worm costume. <laughs> Alright, where did the worm costume go? Oh, it was way too hot. I, I couldn't have had that on the whole time. Anyway, that's it for this week. I do hope you enjoyed this episode of Seven Days of Worm Science, and uh, we'll see you on Sunday, but also tomorrow, because it's Worm Week. <laughs>